Hello everyone, my name is Kerstin Denicke. I'm working as a researcher at the LCS Research Center in Hannover, Germany. And I will give this presentation about social media data and public health mapping. In this project, I will introduce the MECO project. I will present results of that project and will also yeah, present options of combining the project results for spatial decision support systems. So the presentation is structured as follows. I will motivate why we came up with the project idea of using social media data for disease surveillance. I will introduce the basic idea of the project and I will briefly show also the processing pipeline. Then in the main part I will present project results and I will finish my presentation with some ideas on how we could adopt the MECO algorithms to other scenarios, in particular for spatial decision support systems. My presentation will finish with some conclu concluding remarks. The MECO project is about personalized event-based surveillance. It is an EU-funded project with, with a project duration of around two and a half years. So we are almost done with our project. We have seven project partners and among others we have two user organizations as part of the consortium of the project like the Robert Koch Institute and the Niedersächsische Landesgesundheitsamt which is a health organization also in, in Germany. We have also an advisory board where other health organizations are yeah, giving advice. We are inviting them to a couple of events. So, for example, the World Health Organization, the European Center of Disease Prevention and Control, and the Health Protection Agency, and the Institut de Veille Sanitaire. From these organizations, we have participants in our advisory board. So, they are also aware of our project. So, what is the project about? You learned already a couple of things about it, but not what the project is about. So, the main motivation behind the project is that there is a threat and the threat we are considering here are infectious diseases that lead to public health threat and so in the last couple of years this threat became even worse due to some contributing factors like global warming globalization air traffic mutation and so on these factors help the infectious diseases the viruses or whatever to spread around the globe so health organizations, epidemiologists need technologies to early detect this kind of this kind of threats. And with our project, we had the idea to use social media data and multimedia data to support the early detection of infectious diseases. The basic idea, though, is to use social sensors. A social sensor can be a people can be people like you and me we are traveling around from event to event to a conference or whatever and we make observations about diseases and symptoms for example we meet with people and we see they they are looking sick or maybe they are complaining about fever about a sore throat and so on and we are in this case a social sensor and we are writing for example a twitter message stating oh I was at that, that conference and there were so many people having fever and so on. So this kind of messages are collected by our surveillance system that we develop within the project and the data is analyzed. And once the system detects that there is a threshold passed, a signal is generated. Or once a signal is generated and it is shown to an epidemiologist, the, it's a task of the human, of the person, to decide whether it's a real public health threat and whether he or she needs to react. Or whether it's just some noise, so what we call noise, some irrelevant information. So that's the basic idea. The project objectives were to enhance technology for epidemic intelligence. That means that we want to use 
additional data sources like social media data and multimedia data like TV and radio transmissions for detecting infectious disease or threats by infectious diseases. In order to do this, we need to develop sophisticated event detection technologies so that allow us to process multimedia data and social media data. And we are aware that by using additional data sources, we generate a lot of signals, probably. So here we need to give the epidemiologist additional help at the hand to not being overwhelmed by even more signals of potential relevant information. That's why we want to um, use personalization technologies to provide personalized recommendation of signals. All these technologies are made available through web services, which is an easy way to, which allows other systems to easily integrate the systems we were developing in the project. And we showed this already in three different ways, the web services for visualization and data provision and also for signal generation were already integrated, of course, in our MECO portal. But there were also other integrations, like, uh, for example, with the SurfNet system, which is the um, disease surveillance systems from the um, Robert Koch Institute in Germany. And we also integrated some of these web services into the medical information system, which is a media monitoring system provided by the Joint Research Center. So in a nutshell, the MECO system functionality can be described as follows. We are monitoring data in English and German currently. It is updated every four hours, so that means the data is collected continuously, but the processing takes some time and so new signals are generated every four hours. We are considering infectious diseases. And the information is disseminated in some kind of watch board. I will show you some visualizations later on. The system processes around 25,000 documents in English and around 500 documents in German. Documents means, for example, Twitter message or weblogs or forum entries and so on. We focused um, within the project, we focused on Europe and in particular on Germany to, to monitor health events in these areas. So, as promised at the beginning, I would like to give you a brief introduction to the processing pipeline. So, what, how does the system actually work? So, we have a couple of data, social media data, multimedia data. And our users are very unhappy. So, users means epidemiologists and health organizations when they are confronted with all this amount of data. But analyzing this kind of data might be relevant in order to detect disease outbreaks as early as possible. So what we are providing within the project is some kind of filter. And we have different processing steps at the beginning. We have a component that collects all this kind of data and performs some kind of document analysis. So out of all these incoming documents, the first component selects those documents that are relevant. That means, for example, documents that contain certain keywords like disease names or symptoms. In the next step, which is the signal generation step, we analyze these relevant documents to find temporal anomalies. So this means, for example, when we plot this kind of information uh, along, time, uh, along time, then we can see some peaks where, for example, we found lots of Twitter messages where people reported about fever or some other symptoms or diseases. And this we, we are calling signals. 
but still we can generate so many signals that we need additional support for users to not go and be overwhelmed with the information and here our recommendation and personalization comes into play from the signals that are produced we produce recommendations so only signals that are of relevance to a particular user and the recommendations and associated information about the signals is then presented in different ways like for example through these kind of word clouds or through some mappings to geographical map and so on i will show you this kind of visualizations in the next few minutes so that's general processing pipeline and at the end of course the user is hopefully happy since he or she only receives signals that are of relevance for him to her or her now i'm coming to the project 